It was no ordinary practice session at the Moorabbin ground. Just for a start, there was Dennis Lilly taking a cue from a photographer high on the stand behind him. And probably the most fierce competitor of them all, Tony Gregg, was deliberately edging the ball to the keeper, all for promotion. And even after practice, the cooperation continued. It's a different style of cricket under Packer. The players put aside the usual practice in the nets and batted with full field placings to overcome a lack of match practice. The man who devised the Packer World Series plan, Mr John Cornell, said today it would probably cost five and a half million dollars in the first year to get the series started. But he said he was confident the matches would draw daily crowds of at least 40,000. One player who perhaps more than any other has welcomed cricket Packer style is South African Barry Richards, who has been forced out of international cricket for seven years. Oh, it obviously it gets us back into international cricket. It's been a long time since we've played, uh, you know, test cricket, which is seven years, and uh, it gives you a chance of playing with the best cricketers in the world. So from the South African point of view, it's terrific. There was an air of tension at the St Kilda football ground this morning. Tension caused not so much by match eve butterflies, but more by some gigantic hangovers from a team get-together last night. The Packer players are very sensitive to press criticism. Any television team that's there to film them, and not from the Nine Network, must be there to knock them. Still, despite the fact that there was something amateurish about a team full of stars practising on a disused football label, there was also a distinctly professional feeling evident that the whole concept was a goer. I think public opinion, certainly in Australia, perhaps not so much in England, has been uh, more in favour of Packer uh, or the World Series cricket right from the beginning. But I think that there's perhaps been a swing media-wise. I think there's a lot of... I know a lot of pressmen that I spoke to in England when it first came out who said no way it could ever work. Are you critical of the way the press has handled it? Oh, no, I mean, everyone... As long as that's their opinion, as long as they're not writing it because someone's told them to write it or uh, because they think that they should downgrade the thing. I got no uh, crimes at all with somebody writing or talking and giving their opinion, if that's what they believe. And uh, Christ, I've been wrong long, often enough. Uh, if you're big enough to turn around and say, well, I'm, I've made a mistake, I thought it wasn't going to work, I know it's going to work. Gee, I can accept that from anyone. It mightn't have rivaled Bjorn Borg's female entourage, but some cricket groupies have watched practice every day, hopefully for Mr Packer, a nucleus of a far bigger crowd. <laughs> Who's your favourite cricketer? Trevor Chapel. Trevor Chapel. Well, why do you like Trevor Chapel? Um, he's, he's nice. He's he talks nice. to you all the time. He's not stabbed either. And do they all talk to you? Yeah. yeah. Do you know them well, do you? No, yeah. not really. Oh, well. Barry Rich we treat Barry Richards a lot like an Australian, really, because he's a really great guy. But they're really good. We were here with the, West Indian, or the rest of the world yesterday, and they're really nice guys, too. Do you think the Packer Circus will work? Mm. Yeah. Definitely. It's really good. After some initial difficulty, the sponsorships are now rolling in. Pontus and McDonald's are two of the big names who are outlaying hundreds of thousands and buying advertising time. To make sure they get their money's worth, the Chapel Troop have to remember to amble through a bit more leisurely at the end of overs to cater for the advertising spots. And of course, they must try not to go out after the last ball of any over. Yeah, cricket's been televised for a long time now and that makes absolutely no difference to uh... Uh, to the way the players play. People have said to me, you know, why do you scratch your backside or why do you do this, why do you do that? When you know you're on the television cameras, the player himself couldn't give a continental about the television cameras. He's out there to play and the last thing you think about is the camera, doing something for the camera. So to me it's going to be cricket again, played exactly the same way as we've played it and you've got the top players doing it and I think the pride of performance will keep the standard very high. Kerry Packer is no doubt highly flattered that his entry into cricket has attracted academic interest. Some Melbourne economists have been studying Packer's economic impact on cricket and at a national conference of economists next year will be delivering a paper on the subject. Well, from an economic point of view, and the reason we became interested was the fact that uh, here was a, a monopoly, the Australian Cricket Board, and a firm that, well, it wasn't a firm, it was they maximising the benefit to cricket in general. And in came a profit maximizer, and therefore you've got you've moved from a monopoly to a situation where you've got competition. But he's competing on different grounds. He's uh, trying to make money out of it one way or another. Yeah. Is, is competition though necessarily a bad thing for cricket? No, uh, as Richard has said, uh, 
It's moving from an establishment cricket monopoly situation to one of competition. Uh, someone with money has come in, with a lot of money, has come in and made it uh, a competitive situation. The point is that the money that has been made, if you like, in a profit area, has previously been channelled into sub-district cricket and into, uh, well, the lower echelons, which aren't, never make money. And that money is now being transferred to two places. One is to players, and secondly is to meet the expenses and the profits of uh, the commercial enterprise. Mm -hmm. So the people that would suffer would be the lower grades of cricket. Um, the people that benefit are the, the higher cricketers, which is in itself a, a good thing. There's going to be, there's going to have to be a lot of compromising done. And uh, yeah, a lot of the players that are here, um, well, I would say most of the players who are here, are here because that the, they had problems with administration, didn't feel that the players were getting a big enough say in what was going on. So immediately, if we're, if we're talking about going back to playing with the board, uh, you know, the players are going to want a lot more say in what goes on in, in the cricket that they play in. So this year, uh, Mr Packer is not after a, a profit, and fair enough, uh, intelligent. But I think in the long run there's, there are real problems about the two actually ever... <coughs> well, the competition is a very detailed one. It's not just on profit levels, it's on uh, more fundamental ones. I it's think not an economic point. The, the point is that eventually they're going to have to come to a compromise, establishment cricket and packer cricket. Well, I'd hope that we'd be able to look back in three years and say, well, you know, what the hell was all the fuss about? Uh, you know, it's just it's cricket, it's top cricket. Uh, there's plenty of room for everyone. Um, I don't know what the hell all these, the arguing and bitching was about. I, I would be very disappointed if we couldn't look back in three years and be able to say that. The final arbitrator of success will be the public, and one suspects that given the unique dedication of cricket fans, plus the draw card of the world's greatest cricketers, the temptation for those fans will just be too much. The Packer Circus could well have hit the control board for six 